40 years on the run, New Jersey State Police are reminding the public they are still working to extradite a convicted cop killer. Joanne Chesmerd was convicted in the 1973 execution-style killing of trooper Werner Forrester on the New Jersey Turnpike. In 1979, she escaped prison and fled. For those who don't know Asada, yes, she is the step-aunt and godmother of late rapper Tupac Shakur. But more importantly, Auntie is a black revolutionary. She was born Joanne Deborah Bryan in Jamaica, Queens, and she changed her name to Asada Olubawa Shakur. Asada, meaning she who struggles, Olubala, meaning love for the people, and Shakur, meaning the thankful. She was a member of the Black Panther Party, and this is where she adopted the surname Shakur to symbolize the shedding of her slave name. While at the Black Panther Party in Harlem, she coordinated free community clinics and free breakfast program for children, as well as community outreach and engagement. But Asada didn't agree with the direction the organization was taking and left to become a member of the Black Liberation Army, a militant black organization that advocated open resistance and armed conflict. It was while with the BLA that she experienced the incident that would change her life forever. Asada's fame peaked when she was convicted for the murder of a New Jersey state trooper in 1973, for which she received a sentence of life in prison. She escaped prison in 1979 and got asylum in Cuba in 1984. This triggered an interesting cascade of events that resulted in her being added to the FBI's top 10 most wanted list in 2013 as well as having a $2 million bounty reward for her arrest. I was in uh, that prison. Uh, I was put in a, a maximum security unit um, in a cell with two guards in front of the cell, 24 albums a day, and the cell between two gun towers that could train their guns directly on the cell. Uh, I was told that I was in the Yardville a unit for women, even though I was the only woman, uh, and they uh, tried to keep me there for the rest of my life. Let's unpack this. So as the story goes, on May 2nd, 1973, Asada and two members of the Black Liberation Army were pulled over by two state troopers. Police accounts state that they were pulled over for motor vehicle violations. Keep in mind, this is the 70s. They state that the BLA members opened fire with Shakur firing the first shot. The report goes on to state that she fired until she was wounded by return fire. The aftermath of that confrontation was that a New Jersey state trooper was killed as well as a BLA member. While police insist that Asada was responsible for the officer's death, Asada has consistently denied the allegations. We were stopped by New Jersey state troopers and I mean they were out of their minds. You know, my arms went in a split second. They shot me in, in, with my arms in the air and then again in the back. I was left on the ground for what seemed like forever. They finally took me to a hospital where I was kept incommunicado from Monday to Friday. And I don't want to explain what went on Unfortunately, this was not her first issue with the law. There was already a warrant out for her arrest for alleged bank robbery, which, if you know anything about the COINTELPRO program and how the American government operates, this was, well, by design. Between 73 and 77, Secure was charged with murder, attempted murder, armed robbery, bank robbery, and kidnapping, plus six other incidents. She was acquitted on three of the charges and three were dismissed. However, after the New Jersey shootout, she was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. Of course, there's much evidence to suggest that the trial was not fair. Again, it is the 70s. 
Her lawyer in particular attacked the trial, a legal lynching and a kangaroo court, making reference to law enforcement's desire to make an example of Asada. The evidence suggests that there was no gun prowl residue on her fingers. None of her fingerprints were found on any of the guns at the scene. The expert witness testimony suggested that when she was shot, she was in the seated position and her arms were raised. There was also concern about the racial attitudes of jurors drawn from the mostly white county in Middlesex, New Jersey. And yes, it was an all white male jury. The trial has been called unfair by many because of lack of black representation on the jury, the suppression of evidence, and the false propaganda around black activists and activist organizations at the time. She was uh, targeted by the FBI, stopped. And the allegation that she was a cold-blooded killer is not supported by any of the forensic evidence. If we look at the trial, we'll find that she was victimized. She was shot. She was shot in the back. The bullet exited and broke the clavicle in her shoulder. She could not raise a gun. She could not raise her hand to shoot. And she was shot while her hands were in the air. Now that is the forensic evidence. There is not one scintilla of evidence placing a gun in her hand. I'm going to let you finish, but life in neon is a vibe. We celebrate the culture, black culture, through neon lights. Check us out at lifeinneon.com. On November 2nd, 1979, after she spent six and a half years in prison, Asada Shakur escaped from the Clinton Correctional Facility for Women in New Jersey with the help of three BLA members who posed as visitors. The three men came to visit her, hiding guns in their jackets. They took two guards as hostages and escaped in a police van through an unfenced portion of the prison. Once outside the federal prison, the group switched vehicles and made their getaway. The two hostages were released unharmed. Asada remained a fugitive until 1984, when she surfaced in Cuba. Cuba has historically been sympathetic to the cause of black freedom fighters. In the 60s, the Panthers, such as Eldridge Cleaver, Huey Newton, and Raymond Johnson all spent time in Cuba. Many sympathetic Cubans also affirm sociologist ideologies. Therefore, it wasn't a surprise when Fidel Castro offered her asylum, although it set off another sour point in the U.S.-Cuba relations. She worked as an English language editor for Radio Havana, Cuba, while writing her own works. It was in Cuba that she wrote her famed autobiography, titled Asada, an autobiography. In her book, she tells her own side of the story and explores her perspectives as a freedom fighter. In 1993, at the age of 66 years old, the FBI placed Asada Shakur on the list of the top 10 most wanted terrorists. And the question people are asking is, did Asada's crime justify being labeled a terrorist on the FBI's most wanted list? The facts are, through the COINTELPRO program, the government attempted and successfully destroyed every organization that stood for black empowerment and every activist with the intention of demanding equality for black people in America. The U.S. government has long sought to have Asada brought back to the United States to no avail. Multiple governments have either tried to induce or threaten Cuba into giving her up, but the country steadfastly stood by her and refused. In 1998, she wrote an open letter to Pope John Paul II after the New Jersey State Police asked him to call for her extradition during his visit to Cuba. In it, she wrote, At this point, I think that it is important to make one thing very clear. I have advocated and I still advocate revolutionary changes in the structure and in the principles that govern the United States. I advocate self-determination for my people and for all oppressed people inside the United States. I advocate an end to capitalist exploitation, the abolition of racist policies, the eradication of sexism, and the elimination of political repression. If that is a crime, then I am totally guilty. 
The most recent calls for her extradition were made by President Trump, who called on Cuba to stop harboring fugitives from the U.S. justice system. But the country's deputy director of American Affairs said Shakir's return was, quote, off the table. Regardless, the FBI in Newark sent out a tweet on January 1st, 2021, renewing calls for information leading to the apprehension of Asada Shakur. As far as we know, Asada Shakur still lives in Cuba, where she continues to inspire new generations of brave freedom fighters against oppression and equality. Many supporters uphold her innocence of the charges and celebrate her as a persecuted hero of the civil rights movement. She would be 75 years old if still alive today. What do you think? Does Asada's crime justify being labeled a terrorist on the FBI's most wanted list? Leave us your thoughts below. Thanks so much for watching. Stay lit, y'all.